but this right here. So we just got water pouring right in. And I don't know how much of this actually gets into the cabin of the car, because probably this hole up here is putting more of it into the cabin. I think this is probably running down inside the inner quarter panel in and out, I hope, out, anyway. So that's what I gotta do, I gotta address this stuff. I'm gonna treat this up, cut out a whole bunch of it, make a patch, patch it in, and uh, then it's time for dyno glass. The course of my experience is on this third rock from the sun, I've uh, learned the leaks can be really problematic. I mean, they're just terrible. Sometimes you never get to them. It's definitely rusted up in there. Will be to take the front fenders off and probably cut the inner panel out enough so I can get in there and patch stuff, weld things back in. I'm not doing all that. No, no, no. We're not doing all that. But we're going to get it so it doesn't leak and the interior stays dry one way or another. Okay, guys, I got a pipe. Gonna use this for an extension on a vacuum cleaner and see if I can't get down in that dog leg. Go down in there and get down into here. So it seems to be where all of the under the hood insulation wound up. Probably a little carrier varmints did it. Mice. Bad. Now that's all surface rusty in there. It looks to me like it's actually wet. Man, I hate rust behind stuff. You know, what do you, what do I do with that? You gotta figure that out. Too bad they didn't have like a rust bomb you could drop down there or just splat treatment all over. That'd be awesome. Maybe I invented something. Yep, gotta go to the other side and see what I can do over there. Okay, crazy idea 186. Stick one of these on into my air hose and let it flail around in there. Maybe it'll knock some of that junk loose. Not much flailing, but it is, it is getting some of the stuff out of there. It was worth a shot. It really didn't do a whole lot, but whatever. Not sure if I'm finding the holes or not. I mean, it's, it's hard to see. It's hard to see down in there. Let me see if I can show you. I did find one hole, but it looks so very small. See that little pinhole? Little bitty pinhole right there where the beam is focused. I would call that, that is about three-eighths of an inch around. I don't know, I guess water would just stream right down that hole. You know, as it's raining, it fill right up in there and then stream down in. I think what I might have to do is keep this car under cover until I know I can get it dried out real good. And then I'm thinking about uh, some way to seal that stuff up. I don't know. As long as I don't have a carpet in here holding the water right down on it, probably it'd be okay. Next stop, change out that master cylinder and seeing if I can get this drivable. Because I popped the lid. Connor stepped the brakes right to the floor. I popped the lid. It, it doesn't look good, so. Well, I changed out the master cylinder. It wasn't too big a deal. Uh, the lines were froze up, but you know, you take the old map gas, little map gas torch, put a little heat on the nuts, mostly the nuts. These are gonna, the lines are gonna get hot too. But you get them pretty warmed up and they don't gotta be cherry red or nothing. And you get them so they turn. And once they break loose of the line a little bit, you know, instead of just turning it and ripping the line off, you get it with some PB blast and uh, I got them turning. And they're nice and free now and I got them all back on. This master cylinder has different reservoirs. It's got a much smaller reservoir where the other master cylinder was like 50-50. This one's more like, ah, I don't know, 75-25, where there's less fluid for the, dis, or for the drum brakes. But I think it's gonna work because the stroke between the, the beginning and this is the same, and all the way up to here is the same. So basically, I think it's the same master cylinder. They just had a different way of partitioning the fluid off back when they first came out with the disc brakes. Because I think this is the first year for disc brakes up front. Oh yeah, I'm always amazed at how small the, the power booster, the vacuum booster is on these Cadillacs. It's, it's tiny. <laughs> you see great big boosters on stuff. But anyway, I, wanted, I think what I want to do now is I want to be able to get this so I can keep it under cover for the most part. And the best way to do that is to get it running so I can pull it in someplace. And I don't want to spend crazy amounts of time on this. If I can get this thing running and rolling and have it so it doesn't get rained in all the time to where the floor gets soaking wet before I can get the floor treated, that'll be awesome. Now, there must have been some work done on this car before. I don't know if you can see it on the tape, but there's, these are definitely two different colors. This is a much lighter green than the door. And it almost looks like I go back here and 
the doors are a darker green than this. So it's almost, maybe somebody changed the doors. I don't know. Or maybe somebody did paint touch-up worker. I don't know, something weird happened. It almost looks like this was a repaint at one point, but the paint's not thick. I mean, it's just a thin layer of paint on there like factory. But I don't know, it doesn't really match. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna call this the uh, rat a lack and leave it ratty and drive it around. I don't care, as long as I can pass inspection with it, I'll just drive it. Cause I can always start working on it, you know, start patching it up as I'm driving. You know, maybe pull it in the garage and just work on one corner at a time. That'd be kind of cool. In the meantime, uh, I got a cool car I'm driving around. Because it is cool. But I got big hopes all the time, don't I? So the last time we had this thing run, I remember there being a fuel leak up and under here. So let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Okay, the line going up to the carburetor is split. You dirty dog. Wow, this is quite a quite a fuel pump scenario. So we got fuel. I really had to cut this and put another filter here just in case there's junk in the tank. Ah, I think I got a little water under the cap from the pressure washer, but she's running. Oh, it's warming up and drying off. Warming up and drying off, Todd. to drive it off the trailer. It's the little things in life, you know. Let me go far back enough so that you can... Uh... Get the chain? Do the brakes work? Are you going to power brake it? Power brake it itself. It ain't going back up. Oh, okay, yeah, I've seen that before. The booster's sticking. That's probably all that was wrong with it. <laughs> so we just let it run for about 10 minutes. It's sounding better. I look nice, even out. Close the door! Looks like the brakes ain't working. <laughs> Lost brakes. Lost brakes. Bumper reverse. Hit park. Just got it in reverse before it hit your garage. Yeah, it didn't get going too much. I thought you were going a little fast. Yeah, me too. So the brakes went to the floor and they stayed there? Yep. All right, well, we know that needs work. Right. Yeah, we got a Radlack running. Run, run through all your batteries. <laughs> yeah, it could have been a disaster, but I'm just glad it's off the trailer now. I hope it ain't hurt your parking pump. Nah. I hit it a couple times and then I pulled it to reverse that to stop it. It didn't get going that fast. Nice. All right. More work to be done. Yeah. Oh, guys, it's off the trailer. I'm happy about that. Like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Oh, hit the bell. Why not? And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.